How would you describe yourself as a network engineer? Sample answer. I have worked as a network engineer for over five years, during which I have designed, implemented, and maintained complex network infrastructures for various organizations. My experience includes troubleshooting and resolving network issues, optimizing performance and ensuring high availability. I have expertise in configuring routers, switches, firewalls and VPNs as well as implementing security measures to safeguard against cyber threats. Can you explain the OSI model and its different layers? How does it relate to TCP IP? The OSI, Open Systems Interconnection, Model is a conceptual framework that standardizes the functions of a telecommunication or computing system into seven distinct layers. The layers, from top to bottom, are application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. Each layer serves a specific purpose, and data passes through these layers during communication. TCP IP is a protocol suite that loosely maps to the OSI model, with TCP IP's application layer corresponding to a combination of the OSI application, presentation, and session layers. What are the differences between TCP and UDP, and in which scenarios would you use each? TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, is a connection-oriented protocol that provides reliable and ordered data delivery. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, is connectionless and offers faster, but potentially unreliable, data transmission. TCP is suitable for scenarios that require reliable data delivery, such as file transfers and web browsing. UDP is preferred in real-time applications like video streaming and online gaming, where some data loss is acceptable for the sake of speed. What is the purpose of VLANs, virtual LANs, and how do they improve network performance and security? LANs, virtual LANs, are used to logically divide a physical network into separate broadcast domains, allowing better network performance, security, and management. LANs improve performance by reducing broadcast traffic, security by isolating traffic between LANs, and management by simplifying network administration through logical grouping. Can you explain the concept of subnetting and how it helps in efficient IP address allocation? Subnetting is the process of dividing a larger IP address range into smaller subnetworks, known as subnets. It helps in efficient IP address allocation by optimizing address space utilization and reducing broadcast domains, which aids in network organization and management. How do you troubleshoot and resolve common network issues, such as high latency, packet loss, or network congestion? Troubleshooting network issues Troubleshooting involves analyzing and diagnosing network problems to identify their root causes. Common network issues like high latency, packet loss, or congestion can be resolved by checking physical connections, examining configurations, monitoring network traffic, and analyzing logs. Specialized tools like ping, traceroute, and network analyzers like Wireshark are often used in the process. Can you describe the process of setting up and configuring a router and its routing protocols, example, OSPF, BGP? Router configuration, configuring a router involves connecting to it via a console or management interface, setting basic parameters, example, IP addresses, configuring routing protocols, example, OSPF, BGP. Implementing security measures, example, access control lists, and ensuring proper communication between different network segments. How do you secure a network against unauthorized access and potential threats? Network security measures include using strong authentication, encryption, access control lists, ACLs, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, IDs, and regularly updating software and firmware. Regular audits and security assessments help identify and address potential vulnerabilities. What is the difference between static routing and dynamic routing? When would you use one over the other? Static routing involves manually configuring routes on routers, while dynamic routing protocols allow routers to exchange routing information automatically. Static routing is suitable for small networks with few changes in topology, while dynamic routing is scalable and more appropriate for large and dynamic networks. What are the different tunneling protocols, example, 
IPsec, GRE, L2TP, and their use cases. Tunneling protocols encapsulate one protocol's data within another protocol, enabling data transmission across networks that wouldn't natively support the encapsulated protocol. IPsec is used for secure communication over the Internet, GRE for encapsulating non-IP traffic over an IP network, and L2TP for VPN connections. How do you ensure high availability and redundancy in a network infrastructure? High availability and redundancy, redundancy is achieved by deploying duplicate components in the network to provide failover capability. Techniques like link aggregation, example, LAP, and spanning tree protocol, STP, enhance network availability by ensuring alternate paths in case of link failures. How do you approach network design for a new project or infrastructure upgrade? What factors do you consider? Network design involves assessing business requirements, understanding traffic patterns, scalability needs, security requirements, and cost considerations. Redundancy, fault tolerance, and future growth are also essential factors. What is concept of quality of service, QoS, and how it can be implemented to prioritize network traffic? QoS is the capability to prioritize certain types of network traffic over others to ensure a consistent user experience. It can be implemented by defining traffic classes, applying queuing and shaping policies, and setting bandwidth limits for specific traffic types. Have you worked with load balancers? If so, what types of load balancing algorithms have you used and how do they distribute traffic? Load balancers distribute network traffic across multiple servers to optimize resource utilization and ensure high availability. Common algorithms include round-robin, least connections, and weighted round-robin, among others. How do you monitor and manage network performance? Are there any specific tools or techniques you prefer? Network performance can be monitored using tools like SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, NetFlow for Traffic Analysis, and Wireshark for Packet Inspection. Network management tools like Nagios, Zabbix, or PRTG can provide comprehensive monitoring and alerting capabilities. Can you explain the process of network device discovery and how you keep an inventory of all network devices? Discovery involves scanning the network for active devices. This can be achieved using tools like SNMP, ICMP, or proprietary discovery protocols. An inventory of network devices can be maintained in a centralized database or network management system. Have you worked with any cloud networking technologies, such as AWS VPC or Azure Virtual Networks? Cloud Networking Technologies AWS VPC, Virtual Private Cloud, and Azure Virtual Networks are cloud networking solutions that allow users to create isolated, virtualized networks within their cloud environments. What is your experience with software-defined networking, SDN, and network virtualization? SDN separates the network control plane from the forwarding plane, allowing centralized network management and programmability. Network virtualization enables the creation of multiple virtual networks on a physical network infrastructure. Have you dealt with any specific cybersecurity incidents or attacks on the network? How did you handle them? Sample answer, experienced network engineers may have dealt with incidents like DDoS attacks, data breaches, or malware infections. Handling these incidents involves quick identification, containment, and mitigation using firewalls, IPS IDs, and other security measures. Can you discuss your experience with different network monitoring and management tools, example, SNMP, NetFlow, Wireshark? Sample answer, SNMP is used for network device monitoring and management. NetFlow provides traffic analysis. Wireshark is a powerful packet analysis tool used for in-depth inspection. The company's website is experiencing intermittent downtime and slow response times. How would you identify and mitigate the possible causes of this issue, considering both the network infrastructure and the web servers? Answer, I would start by monitoring network traffic and server performance to identify any anomalies. 
I would check for bandwidth bottlenecks, high CPU utilization, and memory issues on the web servers. Additionally, I would review the server logs and analyze network traces to identify any potential issues. Mitigation could involve optimizing web server configurations, load balancing, caching, and addressing any network congestion problems. A company wants to implement a guest wireless network to provide internet access for visitors without compromising the security of the internal network. How would you design and configure this guest network? Answer. I would set up a separate VLAN for the guest wireless network and implement strong encryption like WPA to WPA3. To segregate guest traffic from the internal network, I would use a firewall to restrict access between the two networks. Additionally, I would configure a captive portal for guest authentication, allowing visitors to connect securely and efficiently. The network is suffering from frequent broadcast storms, causing performance issues for all connected devices. How would you detect and prevent broadcast storms from impacting the network? Answer, I would use network monitoring tools to identify broadcast storms, such as excessive broadcast traffic on the network. To prevent broadcast storms, I would enable broadcast storm control on managed switches, set appropriate thresholds, and configure port security to limit the number of MAC addresses allowed per port. Company wants to upgrade its existing network infrastructure to support 10 gigabit Ethernet connectivity. What factors would you consider, and how would you plan the upgrade without disrupting the existing network? Answer, I would assess the current network infrastructure, including switches, routers, and cabling to ensure they support 10 gigabit Ethernet. If needed, I would replace outdated hardware. Planning the upgrade involves scheduling maintenance windows to minimize disruption, testing connectivity and performance after the upgrade, and having a rollback plan in case of unforeseen issues. The company plans to implement a redundant network design to minimize downtime. Describe how you would design and implement redundancy for core network devices and links. Answer, I would use redundant core switches connected in a high availability configuration using technologies like Spanning Tree Protocol, STP, or Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, RSTP. For link redundancy, I would implement link aggregation, example, lack between switches and redundant connections to critical devices. Additionally, I would ensure that redundant paths are properly managed to avoid loops and configure failover mechanisms to ensure seamless switching between active and backup links.